Uh, so I'm Kendall, I'm going to talk about Imagiport coral bone grafting. Um, this is specifically used in facial reconstructions, craniotomies, any kind of cranial surgery. Um, and so the process, they take the exoskeleton of these marine corals and they put them through a debridement process, sterilizing, sanitizing it, and then they prep it for grafting. Um, it's a quick process, but it's very thorough. And then they just go straight into implantation in the surgical process. Um, and surgeons say that it's much more um, effective and it's more user friendly. Uh, and then it goes into the bone reabsorption phase. So what that is, um, within the first eight weeks that the coral is implanted, it's still moldable. It acts like spongy bone. And then within the first eight to 10 months, it's up to 40% absorbed by the bone. Within one year, it's fully absorbed by the bone and basically becomes your new bone. Um, so they have a decreased infection rate. Um, it went down to about only 4% because of the process that they go through to make sure it's completely sterilized, that it's much safer. Um, and then a 100% decrease rate in diseases. Um, it simplifies surgery, like I said, it makes it much faster, quicker. Um, with that, they don't have to prep the area they're going to graft, so they don't have to harvest the bone. So this is an example. The first picture is two weeks after the coral is implanted. You can see how it's pink. Um, the bone is very hollow. And then within the 12 weeks, you can see how the bone has become, um, it grows with the coral and it just, um, it calcifies and so it hardens and becomes closer to cancellous bone. And then in this picture, um, this is based off of my case study. Um, you can see the coral was used for zygomatic arches. So you see the darker um, circles, it's used to recreate that bone. Um, so it can be used to fill burr holes as corks. Um, with skull defects, it's used to basically fill in the lines help with facial reconstructions, and it can replicate anterior cranial fossa floors as well as tissue scaffolding. Um, so other benefits you can see in this picture, um, the first one is where it's more like spongy bone, and then the second one it fills in more, it's more compact. Um, and so it's completely safe, it's biocompatible, biodegradable, so it's completely safe to be in the body. It um, allows for growth factors. So say it's placed in an adolescent, they're still growing, it can grow with them. Um, this is because there's uh, blood flow through the area, cell attachment, and so it adheres to any changing factors. Um, so concluding, it's much more beneficial than using any other bone grafts these days. Uh, positive outcomes I looked for, any research that showed negative effects and they were all positive, it was hard to find any um, ineffective surgeries. Uh, it's developmental, so this has been around for, I saw the oldest study was about 20 or so years, but they're trying to branch out, use it in other places in the body versus just in any kind of cranial surgery. Um, but overall, it's looking very promising. If you saw the picture, um, one of the first ones where it filled up, it filled the area, it basically does its job of filling in and complying with the bone. So. That's all.